Good morning, thank you. And thank you to Tom and Jeff for the introduction and also to Dr. Hesburgh and, for, and the DIO for this event. Um, here, today we're here to discuss electric cars. Uh, I think we can go to the first slide, please. Um, we're, going to talk, we're going to talk a little bit, very briefly about the history of electric cars and electric cars have really been around for over 100 years now. Next slide. Uh, this is actually Mr. Edison with a car he developed in 1890, I believe. Uh, and really, this was the time where electric cars were actually probably more prominent than, than gas-powered cars. In fact, the first, the first car race was won by an electric car in 1895. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a Detroit uh, electric vehicle, I believe. Notice it plugged into the barn. Um, next slide. This is actually the first uh, land speed record holder, and this is a, a uh, this was uh, uh, clocked at 100 kilometers an hour. And I think from a design perspective, it probably, they probably designed it by, and they forgot to put the man in it, because I think it probably looked a lot better before they put the guy in it. But, uh, run by two 12 volt batteries and did 100 kilometers an hour. No air conditioning though. Um, the first speeding ticket was issued to an electric car in 1903. Uh, and actually, I found out recently that in 1914, uh, Edison and Ford had discussions about building electric car, but built the Model T instead. Um, now we're going to jump forward here, and we've sort of been here before, uh, and we've got designers here from Volvo, Fisker, um, GM, and Nissan, so I've sort of tried to look and see where we've been before. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a Fisker from 20 years ago, but I'm sure there was something around. Okay, next slide. Uh, this is the uh, Nissan FEV concept, and I think it'll be interesting when you see these vehicles that aerodynamics are probably perceived slightly differently then than they are now, and I think we'll probably talk a little bit about that as we move forward. Uh, this is interesting. This car had water-beading windshield that blocked ultraviolet rays and improved visibility. That's designer talk for saying we didn't want to put windshield wipers on it. Um, I think it actually quite has got windshield wipers. Next slide. Um, I couldn't find a Volvo, but I, but I did find this one, and I don't really know much about it. I think it's pre-Horbury, um, <laughs> but it might not be. Um, but, you know, sexy beast it is, I think. Um, uh, the next slide is another Volvo as well, and this is quite interesting. Um, this is actually um, Legoland in California, and these little cars there are little Lego Volvos, and it's confirmed with a lot of designers of thought that you can actually design a Volvo with Lego. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next slide. The, I think we all know what this car is. This is the, the EV one, and Bob's going to answer any questions you have on it when, when we come to the, the question session. So I've made fun of other people, so I'm going to go to the next slide. And I've never publicly apologized for this car before, but uh, uh, when I was at Ghia in 1990, um, I did the interior of this rig. I didn't do the exterior, but uh, it, was, it, it wasn't a good one, put it that way. But I think at least we were thinking about sustainability because after its use as an electric car was finished, you could at least use it as a mobile aquarium. Um, but again, this is what we were thinking 20 years ago when we were talking about electric cars. And again, that, they sort of disappeared. So. Next slide. Um, in doing some research for this, I, I Google image searched electric cars and 10 and a half million images came up in 0.23 seconds, I think. Uh, and uh, so basically if there's 10 and a half million pictures of electric cars out there, why aren't we driving them, any of them? Um, next slide, sorry. Well, I've categorized these into four different categories. I think the first one is I have no real friends in the world and I want to drive a large shoe. <laughs> and there's, this is not the only one like this. Uh, next slide. This is a sort of slightly bigger shoe in, fr in front of Washington. And, uh, uh, no comment on Washington. Uh, next slide. This is a, another shoe. Next slide. And a shoe that the guy's probably too big for, to be honest. Um, so these are, these are really sort of where, where electric cars were going to be one time and what people think that single individual electric cars, but not a lot of design input. And I think that's what we want to talk about today is how can, we don't really want to talk about the politics of electric cars or, the, or windmills or the infrastructure, but, but actually how electric cars can be affected by design and how design can affect electric cars. Uh, the next category, I think, uh, next slide. Uh, 
Oh, sorry, another shoe. Uh, next slide. Um, this is going to, um, this is not a beauty contest, this is a science project. Um, next slide. Uh, this, this is an electric car, would you believe, but uh, I think probably um, not a Fisker. Um, next slide. This, this probably takes sustainability to a new level as well. This is a, a grass-covered electric car, and I think aesthetics probably, again, weren't the, the, the highlight of this car. Next slide. I'll let you describe that one, sorry. Um, okay, next. And, and then we're sort of starting getting into the sort of third and fourth category, and, and there's two distinct categories here, and I think this is really sort of like, what if real designers actually design electric cars? Uh, next slide. Uh, and this is starting to get to places where I think that uh, uh, you, you can see that there's some kind of design influence here. And I think these two categories are really, um, what can electrification do to change what the automobile looks like? What can, what, what is the, what can the, the, the power source do? What, is the, what can electric motors do to really change the parameters? And I think you'll see a lot of exciting examples from students specifically where they see that electrification of the vehicle can really change today's paradigm completely. Next slide. Uh, again, quite, quite an interesting looking vehicle uh, but, and a little better looking than a shoe. Uh, next slide. This is the, the Aptera um, car that was shown last year, which is you know, obviously highly sort of uh, developed on aerodynamic principles, but still a very interesting point of view in terms of where car design is going to go. Uh, next slide. And this, I, I thought I had to show a Mazda here. So this is, this is an electric powered Mazda for the future. And I think the next five slides are actually from the Michelin Challenge Design competition. Next. And this is quite interesting because this is another shoe, but it's actually quite a sexy shoe. Uh, it's sort of more like, um, I have no friends in the world, but hopefully I'll get one with this. Um, <laughs> but you can see, very, very unrecognizable as a car, but some, some, some really exciting surfacing and great, great, um, um, great potential here. Next. Another one from the challenge, again, not recognizable to, as a today's car. And I think we probably see this as, you know, there's a lot of pipe dreams in here from a lot of students, but I think it shows you where the sort of younger generation sees us being able to go as we move forward and what the opportunities of electrification might mean. Next slide. Again, another possibility with the, uh, uh, a spherical wheel on the end. Uh, next slide. And then again, getting, getting a little bit more closer to what we would say is automotive design, but still pretty dramatic in terms of its proportions and its looks. Next slide. Uh, very typical student project here. This, this goes from a short wheelbase to a long wheelbase. I think, I think we've probably all done one of these in our, in our student career, but uh, again, still stretching the parameters of where we can take cars and the aesthetics of cars. Next slide. And this is actually the one that sort of joins maybe the two together. This is the mindset from uh, a Swiss company. And this is sort of saying, okay, what can we use from um, the new technologies to develop new, new looks, but continuing the aesthetic we sort of appreciate in today's cars. And from this takes us to, next slide, the Tesla. Obviously, uh, you know, obviously a traditionally designed car, but still using the technology to give us pretty dramatic proportions and it's a very, very pretty car. Another Tesla next, I believe. Uh, the Tesla sports car, again, very traditional exterior design, but at the same time, hopefully using the electric part of it to, to gain advances in other areas. Um, next slide. Um, I'm sure Mr. Boniface will tell, you, tell us a little about this. This is, this is the production vault. Um, and I, again, I think uh, a, a significant piece of design which really sort of um, shows us where the mainstream electric car can go in the future. Next slide. We're going to end up with the, 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 the two sexiest ones. Um, the Fisker here, and I've, I've, I've always wondered about this car, whether it's actually the fact that it's a, a new powertrain that gives it really exciting proportions, or is it because the fact that the, the owner of the company is actually a car designer and he actually got to do what he wanted. <laughs> Next. And again, the, the recent uh, uh, Fisker sunset shown in Detroit. So briefly, I'd just like you to make, make these slides think a little bit about where we can take the electrification and what we can do with them. Uh, next slide. Um, and I think the next question really is we're all asking, you know, is, is this for real this time? And I think if you look at the investment that a lot of companies have made uh, in, in electrification as we move forward, um, for example, um, 
Ford has just announced they're spending 550 million on a new plant in a new plant in Wayne, in Wayne to produce both normally aspirated and electric focuses or foci. Uh, and I think you know you'll you'll hear from many, many of the OEMs that there's a lot of investment going into into electric cars as we move forward. So so yes, I think it really is here. But the key I think that it, that uh, that tells you that this is really here to stay is when you when you start seeing you know world class designers dressed in their best Armani, getting pictured against electric cars. That, that tells you it's cool. And I have a couple examples of that. The, uh, the Bob Boniface, looking very, very um, cool and collected. However, I have to take my hat off to the next one. The uh, Denmark's version of Daniel Craig here, um, <laughs> looking his, uh, so, uh, his sartorial elegance at the best, but, but Henrik, we do miss the white suit. You'll need to ask Henrik about that one.